All right, let's get this going. Hey guys, this is DFD, aka Dark Rose and Death, back with another Kami Hime project video. This one is another union event. It is called Seraph Temp Temperance because you know the the older ones were based off of the seven seven deadly sins, so this will be the the counters to those. I forgot exactly what the name of it is, but yeah. But this one's going to be a darkness-based one, so light teams are going to be the better ones to go for. I'm a light main, so... And I've also got practically every permanent SSR in the game, so I should have a decent time with this. I'm not sure about everybody else, because I'm looking at um some of the things that the bosses was able to do, and that's what makes it interesting. Also, I don't know... If the um, if they started implementing the resistance towards um, paralyzed. So if that's the case, then um, if they did do that, then you're not going to be able to just spam paralyzed and just cheese a boss. So it's something you may want to test out before actually trying. But if if you can't spam paralyzed, then you're going to have to do this the normal way. So. But anyways, this is just like the old Union events where you grind the weaker one in order to get materials for the stronger one. They are Divine Rings now, but you can still call them Grails. You get them in order to get the list of added effects. I forgot exactly everything that's increased, but I do remember some of the stuff. They did not change how much recovery gives, and they... I don't think they changed um, burst damage either. The attack power increase is now 1.5% times the, the, the level of buffs you put into it, so it's 150%. Same thing with HP, because that's been tested out. So they're both, um, it's 150% added to Defender, 150% added to um, Assault, should you max those out. Double attack, I remember being... I think 50% now? And, um, triple attack is 30%, I remember that much at least. So if you max those out, that's how much they'll give. The The rate of, um, debuff increase, like your chances of landing debuffs, that's been reduced, and the resistance has been increased. To be quite honest, you don't need either one, unless you're trying to do the, the paralyzed strategy, in which case you'll probably need to, um, the success rate up, because um, the more you have of it, the more the paralyzed are going to land, but they went out of their way to try and prevent you from doing that anyway, so my guess is they probably, you probably can't do the um, paralyzed spam, and if you can, it's not going to work as well as before, so there's that, but my suggestion nor normally to um, players is um, max out the attack, max, max out the HP, if you aren't hitting the, the soft caps on um, burst damage, you might need some of that. But um, otherwise, you should be fine. Both double and triple attack is very useful to actually um, upgrade, but personally, I like the triple attack more. But um, either one is fine. You can go for both if you really want to. I've seen many different strategies with this one. Because double attack, again, is going to increase by a lot. I think it's at least 50% now. Triple attack can increase by 30%. If you can somehow get both, you will have an insane combo rate. So, there's that too. But, um... Recovery... Honestly, has been outclassed at this point. Because when you start getting really high kill counts, recovery is not going to do anything for you. And then, a lot of, um... A lot of things now kind of want you to get your own recovery to begin with, so you kind of don't need it. However, if you do happen to get it, you got three-fourths of the max for that right there. It will add to your ascension. And those of you having soul, or I think even um, Andromeda for light, I think they get a 50% increase at some point, so that would care. That would cover all of your ascension right then and there. But my suggestion, you probably don't need that. You shouldn't need the um, debuff resistance because the boss has got certain mechanics that will just um, not even bother. 
there's one that does, but it, you have to force it yourself, and then you pretty much just clear it once, and you're good to go. And like I said, the rate of debuffing it, you don't really need to up that unless you're going for the parallel spam, and I don't know if that works. So, again, you may want to test it out. But as like before, you can only get 400 um, levels of buffs per point blank, and each one maxes out at 100, so there's that. Definitely, definitely max out the HP and, um, and attack, though. That's standard. You want to survive longer, you want to deal more damage. My person, personal um, upgrades for my union happen to be the attack power, the HP, the burst damage, because not everybody can do that, and the triple attack. That's what I prefer, basically. But anyways, just like previous um, union events, we have standard and expert for the... Um, for the weaker fight, and then the Seraph herself, which would happen to be the demon in compared to the other ones, she's got Expert and Ultimate. And you will need to do both Expert and Ultimate in order to finish off all the lists. Also, I found this out a while ago, like um, a few Union events back, but apparently if you want any Union participation um, points, they have to come from the Seraph. You cannot do them from the weaker um, fights. Now, interesting little mechanic. There is no charge turns. No orbs. Period. It doesn't matter what fight it is. This means that there are no burst nukes from the enemy. There's like no overdrives or nukes or whatever you call it like that from orbs. This means that if you have anybody that's extending the orb count or removing it, it's useless. Those skills are useless. Now, in the case of a Kamihime called Raphael, which I have doesn't necessarily mean she's useless because she still got the the ability to land dizzy and she still got the ability to remo reduce a rage bar while debuffing a lot of attack power so honestly she still got pretty plenty of use in this but um if you're relying on a character strictly for the orb um manipulation it is useless like say if you're using a kamihime called per heal and you try to land her pressure that's useless but, um, anyways, getting into the weaker one, I forget the name of what they call them now, but, um, but her name's Ab Ab Abstain. Now, these fights are trigger heavy, so you really have to pay attention. Starting off, the first one, if it's in normal mode, it will do... Two normal attacks twice on one enemy. If it's in raging mode, it will be AoE. It will just do one normal attack on everybody. And if it's in stun, it will do one normal attack on one character. The boss, the um, Seraph boss has this mechanic as well. However, Abstain, who's not the Seraph boss, she happens to get strengthened effects based on certain things. And that happens to be, if you use an attack ability outside of stun mode, then the other skills get enhanced. She will perform a normal attack twice and enhance her other, those other three triggers I just mentioned. Also, if you happen to um, knock her HP below 50%, which you should be doing anyways, one time, she will damage everybody and impermanently inc increase her attack power. This cannot be removed. So, that's something to keep in mind. She will eventually get stronger throughout the fight. However, and what it means by attack ability is any, any ability you have that's under a red skill. And to be quite honest, since she's still the weaker one and only has... A little over two and a half million HP on the expert version. Be quite honest, it's not too hard to take her down unless you're just somehow not able to handle Ragnarok advents. So that said, you probably could knock her down before she becomes too much trouble. If you're struggling with expert, just go to standard. She'll do less damage overall, basically. And she's only got 700,000 HP. That is ultimate level ultimate advent, advent level. 
but either way, it shouldn't be too hard to deal with. This is the one fight where you can share it to, to your friends and whatnot, but personally, you should... Union event, you basically should be sharing everything to your union and them alone, so that's how you make the most of it. And then, the Seraph fight herself. I had to look for the mechanics, but I more or less understand that. I'll still go over the paragraph further down. But the first trigger, which is the one that takes the most priority... She does a large amount of darkness damage to somebody and removes all of her debuffs whenever her HP hits half. One time throughout the entire fight, if you use a weak system ability, which is a blue one, then she'll damage everybody and try to land a fence down on them. Now this is the one that's going to be the tricky part. If she has half her HP remaining and you use a yellow ability, she will remove buffs, like, like buff, well no, actually, um, if her HP is below half, she, she won't be able to get this buff removed, so you have to wait it out, I do believe. But what happens is that she'll put her own, she'll increase her own attack power. And it's user specific. On expert it's 5 turns. On ultimate it's 7 turns. This is not timed. You have to literally go through turns in order to run it out. And I think when it's um. When she's at half HP. It just can't be removed period point blank. She also will randomly hit somebody 3 times. Now if you got characters that can attract damage to themselves. Then they will probably be ideal for this. But if you're running a team that's got a lot of yellow abilities, you better use them all pretty much at once. If you got characters that like buffing themselves every turn, then, well, you're going to get hit with this a lot. But like I said, she's still got the other other three moves that the previous um, boss had. Which is um, two hits during normal attacks. If she's enraging, it's AoE one hit. And if she's in stun, it's just one person getting hit once. But... At the same time, they made these mechanics so where it will take a long time to manipulate them from, from normal mode to raging to stun. And stun's what you really want to get her into. If I'm looking at this correctly, off of the side note, it will take her about 16 million damage in order to get out of raging and I'm not sure how much it takes in order to get her into raging to begin with and her stun's only gonna last for 7 million HP damage so that said early on you won't even be able to get her into stun so keep that in mind and like I said there's stuff that will take priority so those normal attacks will not even happen if you're just spamming yellow skills every single turn so you gotta keep that in mind. But anyway, it's a really break down the fights anyway. It says standard, you can easily win if you got a certain level of strength, as said before, basically. But um if you use a red ability, then it will end up giving um it'll end up giving the other ones a strength and effect. Apparently, she can combo for each time she tries to attack somebody. Which means normal combo mechanics apply, so you can end up seeing up to six hits in normal mode for either for either one of these. And well, abstain will also strengthen herself, which is pretty much more damage she'll do. So you have to keep that in mind. And then, like I like I said, half HP it becomes a permanent un unerasable attack buff for um her. So there's something to know. When it comes to the Seraph fight, then you're really going to have to pay attention. Because, um, the Seraph fight, again, you can't use blue skills unless you, you're willing to take that defense down. If you have Awakened Arrows, she'll be very helpful for that, because you'll just absorb the defense down and get a nice little boost out the gate. If you're using the yellow ability, she's going to do three heavy hits. And... It is random unless you have some way of just drawing them all to one character, like, say, Athena. Shamas might do it, but it's not guaranteed.
but that's something to keep in mind. They suggest defensive characters in this, because um, defensive characters can sip and reduce the damage you take quite a bit. Personally, if you have one person in the raid that's able to use defensive um, souls and just let them handle that, but other than that, I wouldn't really worry about it too much. You, you more or less need um, just the right teams to take this on. Because again, you want as little yield ability use as possible so you can just get hit with normals. But um, if you're strong enough, you'll probably just blow through the boss anyways. Me personally, I have a very strong light team. They're about to get even stronger because of the simple fact that I just got a better weapon upgraded thanks to the tower. So there's that. And then it turns out I may actually have access to a, um, a, a phantom weapon setup, which would be Glaive. So when I start upgrading my stuff... If this event's still around by the time of that, I will just get even stronger, so. But anyways, um, far as I can tell, you're, if you can't, if you're like really yellow ability reliant, then maybe bring a defense, um, character. If not, then just don't worry about it. But at the same time, if you're strong enough, you'll just blow through the HP anyways. But keep in mind that the priority is definitely when her HP gets down that 50%, she'll do that one, um, she'll do this one, um, thing where she removes all her, her, um, debuffs, and then on top of that, also deal a lot of dark damage to somebody. And then, um, next one that has priority is if you use a blue skill, but honestly, I would just use that out the gate and just get out the way, because you, her debuff resistance isn't that great. And then going into yellow skill use is where that's going to be the most annoying thing to deal with. Because again, it is something she will keep doing, provided the other two aren't taking priority. And then also keep in mind that um it's gonna keep it's gonna keep her attack up a lot throughout the fight. But apparently you cannot erase it. If her HP is below half. So my guess is it's going to stay permanent at that point. But that's the main trick with that. But anyways. As per usual there's rewards. There's two types of rewards. So keep that in mind. But um. The rewards you get for just doing the event. If you want to get all of them. You need 3 million personal um, participation points. This can come from either one. It doesn't matter if it's com coming from the Seraph herself or um, Epstein, who's the, um, her little assistant or whatever. Union participation points have to come from the Seraph, and you need 60 million between your entire union. You need to kill the Seraph in expert mode, I mean in the expert difficulty, 150 times, ultimate difficulty 400 times. That's what you need to get all of that. And for some reason, it says there's a max for rewards counted. Okay, yeah, they do go higher than um, Expert and Ultimate for those Expert and Ultimate counts. That's mainly just to get the SSR stuff. If you want to go further, you're going to need 250 Ultimate kills, and you're going to need 500. I mean, 250 Expert kills and 500 Ultimate kills. But you just want the SSR stuff, just stick at um, 150 and then 400. If you're going for the ranking rewards, you'll probably get these anyway. Because the ranking rewards are just normal, no, nothing really changed about them, but you still want to do these because there's a lot of stuff that you can get. I highly doubt it. a lot of people are even going to get the top 5, but just if you do happen to do, do that, then you'll get an, a good handful of SR Grails, you get a good handful of R Grails, you get you'll get um a good chunk of magic jewels. If it's for ultimate kills then you'll end up getting a Dragonic Eye and a half basically and a lot of um, magic jewels. For personal ranks it's just a crap ton of magic jewels. Up to a free 10 draw if you manage to get that much. Now granted the ones that are probably going to get the top ranks are the are the players that are not only strong, but stay on like a full 24 hours in one day, but, um, 
honestly, give it a shot as much as you want. It's free stuff on top of what you get for the event rewards. Speaking of which, I do have to point these weapons out. Now, if you just so happen to need HP, this is probably the one de facto weapon to get for that, which happens to be a dark bow. And when you um, final break it, it will go into 30% defender. Otherwise, you'll probably be taking the spear, if anything, which goes into 30% assault. That said, you should not need the SR weapons, very point blank. There's a lot of other sources to get, get weapons that do either two effects or one larger effect than these. You should not need these SR weapons. Just fodder them. The only time you might need them is if you're going for a specific grid, and well, quite frankly, both these grids are better off grinded somewhere else, if that. So... But also, I gotta point out this one thing. You get special soul points from this as well. If you're not grinding events, then your only way of getting special soul points will be through raid medals. Or, um, through tower medals. Well, tower is still technically an event. But if you're not grinding events, your only way of really getting special soul points is through raid medals. Which isn't a bad idea, but quite frankly, you get free um special soul points right here anyways and also you get a lot and i mean a lot of i don't want orbs it's like over 2000 this is a this is the event that gives the most i don't want orbs now so keep that in mind guys you can get a nice little chunk of i don't want orbs here because normally you get maybe up to 750 from an event and you would have to sell the event i don't want for that these union events now will give enough I don't orbs to practically rival selling in a max limit break on um, gotcha SSR because it's a little bit less than what they would give you so that said you're practically getting more I don't orbs than a three star gotcha I don't would give so keep that in mind but anyways that's all for this guys more just going to come soon because i love doing event event videos on this one where i'm actually soloing it and quite frankly again i'm a light main i'm going to have a field day on this not to mention i will show you what teams i, I end up deciding on anyways because i'm going to do a little bit of experimentation to see which one's going to be a best fit i already have ideas on who i'm going to use because remember i'm only missing four light ssr throughout the entire roster right now and they're all limited girls, so. That said, um, I got a lot, I got a lot of leeway on my hands, so I can test things out and see. You may not have the, the same characters I use, but it could be a little bit of helpful if you're doing that, because light's got the advantage. If you do not have a very good light team, well, just use whatever element's best suited for you. Just know that dark is going to have the worst chance of landing debuffs. Despite the fact that this boss is not going to have much debuff resistance anyway. So that's something to know. But you will take the least amount of damage and deal the most amount of damage if you use a light team. So my suggestion is to do that if you can. But you will never have a disadvantage. Unless you're trying to land debuffs with a dark team. But anyways, that's all for now. More just going to come soon. And also, keep your eyes open for another event video because... um. There's supposed to be another um, guild competition coming up, um, another skill coon, so that video will happen pretty soon. I just, I'm just waiting for when it's confirmed, because it may happen this event. If it doesn't, it's going to happen next event. So it will be lumped in with either this union event or the one event that comes after the union event. So keep your eyes open for that. But anyways, that's all for now, guys. Take care.